Hi, I'm Woody Wampler from Legend of the Superstition Mountains. If you like uh, what we're doing, click the subscribe. Click the subscribe button, and then click the X button. Bell. Bell button. Okay, look at that for it. Yeah, that looks good. Oh yeah, baby. Hi, I'm Woody Wampler from Legend of the Superstition Mountains. If you wanna, <laughs> startle. Hi, I'm Woody Wampler from Legend of the Superstition Mountains. If you want to see a little more of me panning and finding some of this here gold, push the uh, subscribe. subscribe button. The what? The subscribe button. Hi, I'm Woody Wampler from Legend of the Superstition Mountains. If you want to see more of my digging and finding gold than you do of Frank's ugly mug, Push on the subscribe button down here and click on the bell up on top and we'll uh, notify you when we get a film. Today we're working in an area we haven't explored, haven't spent any time in. Um, we're going to put some time in here for two reasons. One, we don't want to go and leave ground uncovered. Um, we always want to check the mineralization and the possibilities of various areas. There's always something to discover. Secondly, and most importantly, we had a lead on some PVC tubes that fit the exact description that were um, banded together with duct tape that were found along the banks of the creek here. And while they were partially had been buried again in sediment, um, it looked like the end had been sawed off. So it fit the exact story what we'd heard. And part of this was there were certain landmark descriptions we were given where these would be. Um, unfortunately, we're having a difficult time narrowing down the exact spot because it appears the one direction we were given that isn't coinciding and fitting with the other direction we're giving so we're instead of just concentrate one area we're going to concentrate the entire area and spend pretty much one long day here combing both sides of the creek and every nook and cranny we can because there's always the possibility rather than buried they stuck them under tree roots um, they could have put them just under rocks we're not sure we knew they were drinking they were they admitted they were not in any condition to bury them so the possibilities are there and what we hope is finding these tubes though they're probably not in the original spot it'll give us an indication on the treasure maps of where some of the tubes were or possibly could have been and then we can use that to coordinate and maybe work out some of the other things 
because uh, we, we haven't one of the maps we can't get heads or tails on and maybe it'll give us some information for that oh great There's something interesting. You have a map, but it's not a map. It's a, it's like six or seven pieces. You cut it apart and you try to put it together, and there's symbols on various parts. Now, now when this map came out, it was used to promote Bob Ward's book. You get a free copy of the map. Send this coupon in, and you get you can get the book for whatever six ninety nine or whatever. But what's interesting about the map is, once you get it placed together, you start finding some of the symbols. Classic example: on the map, there's a huge X. Well, on our last trip down to where we went, I'm not gonna say where. Up on the mountain is this huge, gigantic X. And it's in the right area. It's in the area that the other maps indicate you should be to look for the paintings. So on our next trip down there, we're going to be looking for some of the other symbols. Now we have two of them located so far. And it's just a question of how far do you think Bob Ward in his supposed drunken condition would walk with these paintings to bury them. So it's a definite lead that we're gonna follow up on. The one thing I'm thinking is it's definitely rocky in here. If you're looking to bury something, you'd be dealing with a lot of rock, wouldn't you? I don't know, you know, look at this root system with the boulders in it. It's just crazy. That root system has just got rock just built up underneath it. It's spread out all over it. Take this side. I can have that side. You were going to hide something. Sticking down these tree root spots would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Yeah.
Okay, Frank. <laughs> what's that? What's in it? Just Tyler, check and see if there's a flashlight in there. I can't tell. It goes dark. It's black. It's hollow way back in there. Sure. Oh, still it. Holy Christ. That's what I just told you. <laughs> Phone light on. I'm going to in a second. I'm going to record. And how do I turn on my light once I get it on there? No, series not available. Not what I was looking for. see anything here it makes me look at that map and say oh this is a clue but yeah that would be a spot I guess we'll keep it in mind if we want to So you're saying that we should have went the direction I said? No. Nope. The other way. There's another bridge further up, isn't there? But it, no, they said this bridge. But it's got to be by that tree. It has to be by the tree. Even if it washed down. Is that a cross? <laughs> what is that? You see it? And then the moss? Huh. It's like a cross. Yeah. That's what I said. Was this a shrine? Do you think this was hammered out? Or natural? You get the footage of that. I got the footage of us. Now you can get the footage of us. I think it's natural. I think what we could do is walk a little further and then up on the road and walk up the road. I think we'll go back and then start our starting point and then go back the other way. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I don't mind coming down this way and looking because anything can wash out. Yeah, we'll go closer to the road, we can walk down before we can get up onto the road. We'll cut that out that we have an easy way back. <laughs> yeah, if you were looking to bury something in here, I'd say these tree roots and stuff would be the spot.
up here. Mark these spots with your GPS, and when you look at the map, sometimes it even makes sense. You find a few of these. Anything? No. It's odd why somebody would dig that. Yeah. One, one spot that might bring up interest to us is when you see an area that's been dug, or even, you know, it doesn't have to be necessarily any time recently. It can be an older spot. There's two things you're looking for is, one, how much dirt was displaced. And sometimes you're looking to see if the displaced dirt would actually fill the hole. Um, a lot of times when you're looking at that, you look over, it could have been water, could have been flooding, could have been someone just metal detecting and digging around for a coin, a bottle cap. But more importantly, you want to watch that displacement because if there was something in the hole, you'll have a lot less dirt that would actually fill the hole. And that's a key thing. So a lot of times you can look over at something and say it's natural or just realize some guy was plastering in the area and you don't really have anything. Frank, of course, is going to double check me on that and run the metal detector over and check and double check and triple check just to make sure we're not passing anything by. Is that toilet paper? Yeah, some shit too. Oh, that's great. I'm just not gonna aim the camera down at that. There's an X. Where? See the X? You get this out. See the X on the rock? No, I remember there was an X on his map. I don't think that's it. I think that would be too small and too hard to find. Let's see over here. So sometimes you're working your way along and in this case we come across a rock that has an X. It can be natural, it can be man-made. You don't know if someone was just messing around or if they placed it there. At times, even natural things, people can place them there for specific reasons. Um, knowing we have a map and it has marks and it has X's and various things on it, 
we don't know if we're dealing with something with a, what coordinates with the overall map features. So what we have to do is note the area. So even though I might dismiss it, I'm noting, I'm going to make sure I keep track of that. And if something else comes into play, I'm going to also remember where that X is. And if it falls in line with a couple other symbols, then it just adds to whatever we do. So there, nothing's ever been forgotten or lost or pushed aside completely. It's there in the back of our minds, but it just appears to be something that we can't dismiss outright, but we're not gonna just put a whole lot of faith in it right now. Okay. All right. okay, I see it does look like that symbol more, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Just me. We can compare it later, but that sure looks more like what that thing was. What the fuck is this? Where are you from? Oh, yeah. oh. It's not that. like this is a trail you have to mark. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is another corn rock. This is another what? It's another corn rock. Except this time, we'll move the stones. Oh, okay. And I'll think about it later. Hold it. Before you move the stones, let me take a picture of it. All right. Even though we have it on video. I'm sorry, Kevin. So what's interesting is we're going through, we find a cairn, and you will find those. Um, it's odd that it's just in the creek, and, and it's not an area you necessarily would need one. Um, those are always very difficult to find. How long has it been there? Um, you can't just, you, you can guesstimate, and with this story, we're dealing with something that happened in the 80s. Uh, so the window we have, it could be any time between last week and the 80s, for all we know. I would think with the floods that have come through, it would have knocked it over, but that doesn't always work that way. What was interesting is we were able to look up and see a keyhole signature in the rock. Um, one of the maps has a keyhole and we're able to take that keyhole and try to place the map and that's one thing we've been trying to do is taking these different maps and finding pieces of them and then trying to orient them to where they are um, the one map is a puzzle piece map while it has an indicator of north you can make north several different places on the map so finding the keyhole finding a couple other things may allow us to put the map and orient it to know where to put the north arrow What's up there? What are you doing? What are you doing? Let's see what's up here. Okay, that's it. Much on the pond. The people been traveling up there. Yeah. So you decided you had to go that way. See where that sand starts. Yeah. Where that sand starts back to the bridge. That seemed to be the best area because the embankment on the south side seemed to be conducive where you could 
bury stuff in it. This stuff gets back to this rocky. It's all so rocky that if you try to dig in it, you're just going to find big boulders and rocks. As I would think. The two of them drinking, and the whole story sounds like they would have been trying to find the easiest possible method to bury stuff. So. There was one spot I saw just on the side that was like, come, it was weird. It had nothing there, it was just sand just on the side. Yeah, well that's what I'm talking about. Those areas look good. It was just this one single that yellow spot. back there, Ty. What's the yellow? Never mind. Okay. What is it, Tyler? It's a giant snake. That's an old Palo Verde tree, I'll tell you that. It is. Old. He's back at the bridge. What? I think I just saw him walk across the bridge. Which way? That way. Maybe he couldn't get back in here. I think. Tyler. I thought I heard him walking along the hey, side. What did Tyler see? What did you see? He didn't see anything. He says. I heard. I heard him. Um, his little cane thing. I thought and footsteps. So I thought he was on the side. But he must not have been able to find a way back down, so he just turned around and heading back. There's only two trees. Is it right by the tree? Yeah, it's, it's down by the tree with all the names on it. Do you know where the tree with the names on it is? No, obviously not. I haven't seen anything carved on any tree, to be honest. Neither have I. So did you see anything interesting while you guys were walking that you noticed? Little things here and there. It was mainly just the composition of the ground, how it changed. The sandy embankment that we could dig in. A lot more trash down here. I think we're about 100 yards this way on the left, and then probably 40 or 50 yards this way on the right. And the problem I'm having is there's no tree with names written on it. Yeah. Right, let's... Not the car. You can film down there. While I'm filming you. The problem I have with this side in the embankment is it's so much rockier. As soon as you start to dig in there, you hit the boulders and you start hitting heavy rock. And the sand is obviously just washing away over time. So it could have been what happened, something was exposed. It could have been someone found something in this area, but I don't see anything that makes me feel like, well, they would have, this would have been an easy dig. They were looking for a spot to make it easy. Not to find, but for them to dig. And this side just doesn't feel it. Because as you continue up this, everything all the way up here, it just is boulders and rocky, and it seems like everything would wash out. The other side completely has a different feel about it. Like you could bury something back up in that embankment and it would be there 10 years later. But how everything, the symbols fit with everything is almost impossible. I'm not quite sure. And I was hoping to find those tubes because those tubes would give us some sort of confirmation that someone found something in here. We could look at one of these spots and come up with something.
ですね。